Hey, how you doing? This is John, and welcome to John's Long Box. Today we're doing another back issue bonanza. Why? Because I keep buying back issues, and it seems like people really like these videos. I get a lot of views. So, what happened? Uh, I, I kind of fell out of uh, love with Marvel and DC around 2015, and uh, I stopped buying them new off the stands at that point. Although I, I have bought a few Marvel and DC comic books to uh, to finish runs. Why? Because let's face it, all Marvel, all all serious comic book collectors are a little uh, slightly obsessive compulsive about their comics. Now I got these from mycomicshop.com. They don't know me. I get no kickbacks or anything. I just like their service. It's very reliable. Very, very. Uh, I think their prices are fair and their service is impeccable. All right. So let's let's look at what I got. So this is very special to me now because I bought number one when this first came out. This Indiana Jones, the Further Adventures of Indiana Jones, and I didn't like it. Um, so I got to know, even though it was it was John Byrne and Terry Austin. I I don't know why I I, I didn't like it. And then when I reread it, because one of the subscribers asked me to showcase. Indiana Jones comic, and I brought it out, or I reread it, and I showcased it. I still didn't like it, but I wanted to see how the story ended, so I couldn't just get number two. I got up to number five. Next thing you know, I'm collecting the series, <laughs> all because of this channel. So here we go. This is number eleven, and uh, who, who's drawing this? Uh, 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 Kerry Gamel. All right, looks looks pretty good. Uh, you know, I, and I'm enjoying this now. The John Byrne kind of made. Uh, Indiana Jones like a, 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 a wise ass and I didn't really like like he he had all like the sass and charm but he had he had all the sass and vinegar but he didn't have any of of, of, of the charm and likability of that Harrison Ford brought to the character this, this is pretty cool I'm really enjoying it so here you go I'm finishing out the in Indiana Jones and their fun reads so here we got Bob oh Bob McCloud Indiana Jones getting gored by a bull that's pretty cool so this is number 12 we got number 13. Oh, it's Assistant Editor's Month. So I wonder, is this going to be goofy? I have no idea. It's Assistant Editor's Month was a... Uh, what Marvel did at the time was all the editors, they went to like a hotel for like a convention. And it was just like, you know, Marvel was was was, was the t on top of its game at this point. They were just selling like gangbusters. So all the editors, they would go to a hotel like... like a, a working vacation. And they, they would brainstorm ideas. They would talk about the... the, the products and blah 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 you, you know it was a it was a a, a a meeting a fun meeting so all the assistant editors were in charge for one month so all the comic books would come and that was the avengers went on david letterman and, and stuff like that so a lot of them took the time to make it like a humorous silly event that were actually funny you know i i said in another video that humor comics are hard to pull off because humor is difficult to write so and it it was fun some of the comics went with the humor and, and did wacky stuff and then said, oh, this is the assistant. But, you know, but of course, it was planned months in advance. So the editors knew. So I, I don't know. Is this going to be goofy? I don't know. It doesn't look like it. So some, you know, some of the comics just treated it normal. Look at this cover. I, did, I, I, I ordered these. I just went down the list and checked off. You know, I, I'm getting five at a time, then reading five at a time. So I didn't really look at the covers yet. I kind of wanted to be, I knew I was getting them. I just checked out the price, make sure there weren't six thousand dollars, something like that, and and then I got the look at this cover. It doesn't have a, a title on. It. I at this time to get like a mainstream comic book that had like a painted cover was was a rarity. This is pretty cool. Number fourteen, and we got number fifteen over here. Look at that! Look at the sky! Look at the old school coloring. You know, unrealistic but like glorious at the same time. I'm trying to look for cover credits. Kind of weird. It doesn't look like a... <laughs> he's twisted just a little too much there, India. Oh, here we go. Oh, Herb Trimpey. Okay, Herb Trimpey's a... Look Look at the legs. <laughs> okay. All right. What do we got here? We got... Uh, oh, Dan Danger Girl Wildcats. San Diego Preview. There you go. I flip this over. I think that's Wildcats on the other side. Scott, Scott Campbell with his cheesecake. This this was a fun series. It, I, why was this never picked up as, as a as a network TV show? I, I don't know. It, it's like Charlie's Angels, you know. <laughs> Just realized she's grabbing his knife. You know, these are all sexy super spies, each with a specialty. You know, if if you saw like a Pulp Fiction with Fox Force Five, they were talking about that show. This is Fox Force Five, you know, in comic book. And then you got uh, Scott Campbell, who who's just his forte is drawing sexy cheesecake women. It's it's just it's just great. It's just great. Okay, we got the 
newest issue to me of Spidey Super Stories. I tell this every time when when this comes up. I had a uh, I had from eighteen to uh, to whatever the last issue was fifty six or something like that in a box and it disappeared. Nobody bought these because you couldn't give these away up until the past five years ago. You couldn't give these comic books away. Matter of fact, when I would talk about them, people didn't even know what I was talking about. So the and now all of a sudden they're expensive. I don't know what's going on. All back issues are expensive. So this was the Electric Company, which was like, you know, uh, a, a little more, if you ask me, like a little bit more hip version of, of, of Sesame Street, teaming up with Marvel Comics and, and making, you know, easy to read my first comic books. They, they, they're nostalgic, they're hokey, but I, I, I'm just, I'm just enjoying them, you know, you know, as we get older, we buy back our childhood. Here we got Conan the Barbarian. I bought Conan number one, two, and three, like, I don't know, a couple of years ago, and they've been on my spinner rack, and I haven't read them. They've just been sitting there and sitting there, and one of my friends, my friend Dan, who's also a subscriber, he said, I want to see, I want to see Conan showcase, and uh, I showcased uh, uh, Savage Tales, and he was like, no, I want to see Conan, so I, he forced me to read it. Why was I delaying reading it? Because I'm crazy, because I have a reason, because once... I had one, two, and three. Once I read three, I had to buy four. And then once I buy four, I have to buy five. And these are kind of expensive. So just having them on the spinner rack reminded me that I, that I was collecting them, but preventing me from buying. Because I, I can't buy number six unless I have number five. Because I'm crazy that way. So it's on my spinner rack. Reminds me to read it. You know, if I saw an issue number four really cheap, I would have bought it. And then read one, two, three, or four. Because I have, but I can't buy number five unless I have number four. You did, you dig me? Am I crazy? So, so he forced me to uh, start reading my Conan. So now I just got four, and uh, you know, I'm I'm hoping they get cheaper and cheaper as a uh, as, as I the issue numbers go up. But this is early Barry Windsor Smith, just just legendary comic books. You know, I, I showcase number one. I didn't particularly like it. It got better. It's getting better with every issue, and it wasn't the art; it was the, it was the writing. the sto The story was a, uh, I don't know. I didn't think the story was too great, but here we go. Spider Man, not Spider Man. Conan's fighting a big spider, and uh, I think this is the the girl from the first issue. Just, just glorious, just glorious. All right, I'll do that, and then I, I got more. I just that's all I could fit on this easel. So here we go, the freedom freedom fighters. I've always liked this team. This was like another. Uh, DC Earth, I forget which exact number it is, but in this particular world, uh, the Nazis won, and the uh, the World War II is still going on till the present day. So, like, they're the freedom fighters. So they're you know fighting in in a world where, where Nazi Germany conquered the world. I think it's like Earth Three or whatever. But this was from a, uh, I think it was Quality Comics was the name of the comic book company, and I. I uh, DC famously bought a bunch of uh, defunct comic books stable of characters. So this is the Ray, the Human Bomb, Black Condor. I never liked that guy solely because of his costume. I, I just hate that costume. Uncle Sam and then Phantom Lady. And then what are they doing? And the, Oh, a doll man. And then there's Doll Girl, but I don't think she's on this cover. So this is their, their first issue. I've always liked the, uh, the, the characters. And here we have uh, the Silver Ghost. That's a pretty cool... He's back, the Silver Ghost. Ha, I've turned your pals to silver, Uncle Sam. Now, become my slaves or these freedom fighters will die. There you go. More freedom fighters. DC salutes the Bicentennial. So this is 1976. Okay, Wonder Woman's here. She's going to take him down. Oh, Ernie, Ernie Colon. I think that's what that says. I, I gotta put my glasses on. Oh no, don't tell me Wonder Woman died. Oh no. Okay, this is number five. And then Forever People. Why is why did I get this? This is Forever People number one. I'm I'm just guys, I'm an unabashed Jack Kirby fanboy. I never read these comics. I have an omnibus of of all the uh, the the fourth world the fourth world is what Jack Kirby called like all of his dark side new genesis forever people stories but uh I'm never going to read them oh I just noticed this uh, I I'm never going to read that omnibus but I will read the comics so here we go I'm 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 uh going crazy and and picking up forever people and oh oh 
piece of paper. All right. And now Jimmy Olsen, Superman's ex-pal. This is Jimmy Olsen. What number is this? 133. Why did I get this? Because this is the first Jack Kirby in DC. So this is the introduction of a... This is where it all begins. I think the next issue is the first appearance of Darkseid. I didn't pick that up yet. So here we got the, the introducing the Newsboy Legion, the Wonder Wagon, and it all starts here. So this is Jack Kirby drawing, uh, drawing uh, Superman comics. And who's that? Oh, yeah, yeah there he is, Jimmy Olsen. Um, G Jim, Jack Kirby, as we all know, I, I think, and if you don't, I'll explain a little bit. Jack Kirby and Stan Lee pretty much are the, uh, the, the, the main... Uh, the prime movers over at Marvel Comics. They came up with the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, Hulk, Thor, Daredevil, uh, pretty much everything that you think about in Marvel except for Spider-Man, that was Steve Ditko, and, and Doctor Strange, that was Steve Ditko and Stan Lee. But Stan Lee, everything, Jack Kirby, mostly everything, 90%. And then, I don't know what it was, but Stan and, and Jack had a falling out. And uh, so he went to DC Comics. Now, Jack was a superstar. He could have said, give me Superman, give me Batman, give me whatever you want. But he didn't want to put anybody else out of work. So he said, give me something that's about to get canceled. And Jimmy Olsen, Superman's power is about to get canceled. And then Jack Kirby took that over. And that's, that's, that put his foot in the door for, for uh, DC Comics. So to me, this is history. I can't afford the first Jack Kirby comic of all time, but I can't afford the first Jack Kirby doing a DC comic. So th this is comic book history. I can't wait to read it. And here we go. Here's the big guns in this one. This this was cost me a week's paycheck. It was Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos number one. Uh, pretty good condition. I I, I I could have gotten it in worse condition at more affordable, but uh, I'm a crazy person. So this is the first appearance of of, uh, of Sergeant Fury. War Comics. This is what, 1963, 1964? Uh, so I'm going down this rabbit hole. <laughs> I'll definitely be showcasing this one after after I read it. So there you go. There's nothing underneath this. So I hope you enjoyed this back issue bonanza, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Thanks a lot, everybody. Um, I, I been forget to say this for a while, but I do appreciate you guys taking time out of a busy day to watch watch my videos. Thanks a lot, guys. I, I like I said, now that I moved, um, I don't really have. It, it's funny because I I do have comic book friends that are nearby, but. They're adults with kids, and we don't get to hang out as much. So this is the way I want to interact with comic book fans. This is how I'm interacting with comic book fans. So please, contact me. My, my Twitter is jlongbox. My, uh, my, my email is johnslongbox at yahoo.com. Or, or just comment here. I'll talk to you. I'm trying to figure out, you know, I'm really close to 300 subscribers. Should I do something for 300? You know, dress up as a Spartan and run around and, and, and beat up my wife. That would be kind of funny. Uh, she'd kick my butt back, but that's the way it is. And I don't know. What should I do? Now I'm just rambling, so I'll stop here. Thanks a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, guys, with another video.